Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Julie with Bookshelf by Julie. So today we're going on with our Beginner Basics series. This whole month we're going to be talking about, maybe a little beyond this month, but anyways, we're going to talk about putting a, a signature into a journal. Some kind of binding system, okay? So I thought the first one to start with is the sewing, right? You, uh, that's that's the main go-to, is to sew it in. So we'll start with that one, then we'll move on to a hidden um, spine, we'll move on to ring binding, um, all sorts of different ways to put a journal together, to put the signature in the journal, okay? So I've got this one, this one, the other one that I made uh, for this series is being used as a, a baby boy journal, so this one, <laughs> This one I replicated. It's uh, the envelope journal. Got your flaps in. Um, and and the four main envelope pages, I guess we'll call them. The front, the back, and then your inside. And in the center is where you would want to put, or where I would want to put, the um, signature. Okay? So now that we've decided that, you could put it here. You could put it here, but the center has more um, stuff. It has more layers. So you've got, um, I guess all four of the envelopes are sort of intersecting here. Um, you would have, if you got off just a smidge on this one, you would have maybe a little bit of trouble with just having one envelope layer, you know? You've got the you've got the fabric on there, and that's good. So you could put it anywhere you want. I just think for me, the safest place to put it is in the center. Okay, if that makes sense. Hopefully, I explained myself. Okay, so I've got a few pages. These pages are from. Uh, I think this is from the handmade uh, journal kit. Uh, so I think. So and this is a freebie on my website. There's lots of freebies on my website. Beginners can, well, anybody can go on there and just find what you find what you want, and um, yeah, just use use have fun, play with it. You know, I forgot something. I was trying to be so prepared. You see all my tools here. I'll be right back, and I'm back. So now that we've folded this together, that's pretty simple. Put them together, fold them together. I think I would probably suggest using four or six pages for especially for a beginner to sew in. This is going to be just a writing signature. I'm not really planning on decorating it and putting a bunch of stuff in it. So four to six pages would be great. I think I have eight in this one. It's, you know, it's a thing. I just thought I'd, you know, prepare it to be a journal. This one I'm keeping pretty neutral-ish. I mean, that's a little pink, but <laughs> this is pink too. Anyways, um, I'm keeping it pretty neutral, pretty, um, just whatever comes up that I want to make a journal with, I can do it later. A lot of my um, uh, journal kits... Um, are very mix and matchy. You can use them with, you know, the sisters uh, journal pack will go with the in the secret garden journal pack, or the several others. I mean, they they all just kind of mix and match. I don't know of any of them really that wouldn't go with another one. So ah, it's the way I am. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. And you don't have to do this particular part. Um, but I like for when I'm putting in a writing signature, all my pages to be um, the same here. It just looks more like a book, right? So I've got a metal edge on this ruler. And I'm going to use that as my guide. And I'm going to get it lined up on a line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that I've got 
that to guide me. And hopefully I'm going to hold it still. Now if you have one of those really big old guillotines, you can use that for this. I have one, but it's really big. And I think it would be very difficult to get into <laughs> the camera shot. So I'm not using it for this. Um, when I'm making one off camera, yeah, that's where I go. Um, but see, you get them just all nice and neat and pretty. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of clips. Because you do want it to be still. You do one side and... I just do the other side. Now, if you're a real beginner and you've never done this before, clip this side, this side, this side, and this side. It gives you extra security and nothing's going to move around on you. Okay? So, once you've got these clipped together, you're going to get your, your journal base that you're going to put it in, right? And you're going to sort of get you another clip or two. Now, once again, when I'm doing this off camera, I don't use quite as many clips because, yeah, it's a thing. Once you do it a few times, you're good, you know? All right, so I'm just going to clip on the side I didn't, you know, when I was clipping the papers together, right? Okay, so we've got that clipped together. And you don't want to lay it out flat, or I don't, okay? Some people do that. Um, if you lay it out flat, it's going to be really hard for it to fold. You want these pa pages to fold and to lay flat in your journal. So to do that, you need it folded, if that makes sense, when you're putting it in there. Now, a lot of people have different things that they use. Just a regular sponge will be fine. This was some packaging that came, something was in there, you know, sideways and all that stuff. It works perfect for, uh, um, for this purpose. Uh, they make, um, I can't recall the name of it, but they make a thing that you can buy that's just almost like this. And it's really expensive, so I wouldn't suggest doing that. But it's wooden, and then it's got some spongy parts and stuff. This is just packaging. Like if you get a, pe a piece of equipment or whatever, and they have it packaged in this stuff, save that. Yeah. Okay. So, what you're going to do is, and you can do this, you can measure, you can get a ruler and say, okay, that's about an inch right there. But with me, I, I kind of do a lot of eyeballing. You want an inch from the top, which I'm going to poke right there, okay? Then you want an inch from the bottom, which is going to be right there. Also, another thing I didn't say was, as I was going through this, you want to give yourself a room from the top and the bottom so that your pages aren't down here too far or up here too far. You know, you want to have you want to have them centered in there. That's what I'm trying to say. And then you want to go to the center of your two holes you just poked and poke one there. Pretty simple so far. We haven't hit Murphy's Law yet. <laughs> so, okay. Uh... Let's see what I can do. I have a bunch of nibs in here besides my needles. So I'm going to pick this one here. It's not too big. Uh, get all those back in there. And this is waxed linen thread. It's not too pricey. You can get a whole gob of this in a, um, a set or something like that. It's not too pricey. Amazon has gobs of it, so... It's really strong though. It's waxed and it'll go right through the eye of a needle so easy. <laughs> oh my word. I like that part of it. Okay. So I, as you can see, I've kept it in this little thing because that keeps it still. It's like having that extra hand that you always need when you're doing something. Sort of. So I'm going to go in the middle and right there. We want it. We want all of our stitches to come out on the on the edge of that spine, right? Okay, so now that we've got it in the middle, I can't see this one, so I'm gonna go back in and make it bigger 
So, and that's okay to do that. Um, so that you can see what you're doing. Because you need to see what you're doing. So that you can get right back in that hole. And you see how it comes right up in there? It's because you've got your papers clipped together. And you're keeping everything kind of folded. You know, folded in. Uh, it's a little bit crowded this way. But this is easier than trying to lay it out and flatten it out and doing all these things and everything gets all skewampus on you this this kind of uh this can get a little bit hinky okay i'll be honest with you the sewing in the signatures can get hinky it's uh one of the things that i guess it scares people <laughs> it does i'm i'm not laughing at you i'm laughing with you okay so we're going to go back through that hole in the middle, hopefully. Hopefully. And what you want to do is you want to have this pulled really good and tight. It'll help. Not always uh, perfect, but it will help uh, getting back through that hole and not going through your... Um, not going through your thread. Because if you sew through that thread, that becomes problematic. Okay, now that's not wanting to go through there, so it's going somewhere else. So when that happens, we're going to take one of our clips off. We're still, you know, doing good here. Let me pull that tight again. Get that through there. And there we go, right there. You see the needle? Okay, so now that we've got that, and we've still got that part of it clipped, that's why you have to clip the, the base and the pages, because until they're sewn in all the way, they're not one thing. They're two different things, okay? So we'll go up through there, and make sure you get one thread on one side and one on the other. Now, at this point, you can take the clips off. Because they're just in the way now. <laughs> okay, you want to pull that good and tight. And go back here. That's a little loose. That's a little loose. So we need to pull it tighter and tighter. Not, not so tight that you're going to rip your paper. Now that's good and strong and tight. So you don't want to rip your paper. Okay, <laughs> that's not a good idea. But you do want it really good and strong tight. So I go through here twice. It's a double knot in one. And then I do that same thing again. Okay. And as you see, I didn't cut my strings. I didn't cut my thread off. It's a big mistake. No, it's not. I, just, I like to give myself some security. So I don't cut that off. I mean, it's not in my way. So I leave it there. And then I just cut it off. Right there. And there's no waste. There's no, oh, that was too long. Oh, that was too short. There's just that. It's just now. Now that we've got that in there, I leave these strings long so that if you want to tie a charm on there or put a bow here and tie a charm on there, it's all the options are still there. Okay. I'm just, for now, I'm going to leave it there as a, you know, just a double knot. So you want to go in and you want to work your paper over, work it over, and work this one over so that it can start getting used to its new place in the world, right? So, and you don't have to have a brayer. I just like it. <laughs> it makes my job easier. Okay, so now that you've got that in there, we've got all our pages trimmed to where they're all, you know, like so, and you've got that. That was my printer did that. <laughs> Crinkled the paper a little bit. I'm not fussed over that. It's all right. Because um, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's our first sewing a signature in. That's our first binding system is simply to use a needle and some wax linen thread. This is an awl. If you hadn't heard of that before, that's pretty simple to use. Bone folder. 
Briar. And this is a rotary trimmer. It's just a cheapy Fiskars one. Um, these are a lot cheaper than the ones I used to get for uh, doing fabric. And they'll cut fabric too. Just saying. Uh, loads cheaper than... If you get one that they say is made specifically for uh, fabric, whoa, they're expensive. This one's cheapy. And it works great. You can buy the replacement blades for super cheap. And golly bob, it's really good. Okay, and you need a ruler. And that's what you need to do this type of binding system. Okay, so you can do, this is a freebie. You can do any of the, I'm, I've got several line pages on the, on my website if you want to go get those and practice with them. This one's actually in a journal kit, but you can get any of them. Uh, and make you a little signature. This one had eight pages. Uh... Like I said, suggestion for really, really new people haven't done this before. Four to six pages is enough. You're, that's going to give you eight, uh, 12, you know, that's going to give you a lot of writing space into a journal. And you've got, you know, plenty to do that with. So four to six is a really good size, small journal, especially to practice. And I give you another tip. When you're, when you're putting this in and things go a little weird with you, um, go in here and take your scissors and just snip that and that one and take it back out. Redo your whole process. It doesn't matter if you're doing the same signature over and over. It gets easier <laughs> as, you, um, as you put it in more than one time uh, because it's already getting used to being folded and and being sewn through and all that stuff. And you already have your holes in. Um, so you can re you can take this out and redo it if it doesn't come out the way you want it to. With crafting, there's always more than one way to do something. And that's what we're going to do this this um, with this binding stuff. There's When I was in college, I was in this computer technology class that was kind of... Uh, I don't know, it was complicated. But anyways, the um, the teacher said there's three ways to do anything on a computer. And there were several things that we had listed that we had to find three ways to do on a computer. <laughs> that was not fun. But um, in life, there's always at least three ways. There's loads and loads and loads of ways to do the same thing Several different ways, okay? So that's what I'm trying to show you with the um, the journal bases, the envelope, the chipboard, the file folder, the book board, all that stuff. This It's the same thing. You're making a journal base. Well, with the um, signatures, there's lots of different ways to put those in as well. So we're going to explore all that and find more than one way to do what we want to do and you can pick your favorite and then do that that's what I do uh, this is usually my main go-to every now and then I'll do this one or that one or the other one you know so you don't get stuck in a rut but the main go-to for me is just to sew it in it's simple and easy maybe not always easy but it's doable so you can do this this is pretty um, straightforward Give it a try. Go check out the freebies. Oh, and if you want to be in the draw for a free journal kit from my Etsy shop, uh, just leave a comment down below any video that I make, and you're in the drawing. I'm going to be giving away four journal digital journal kits uh, over the next little while. When I get to 700 subscribers, I'm going to do a draw. 800, 900, and 1,000. I'll do a draw each time I hit those numbers. And if you've made a comment, you're automatically in the drawing. So, simple, cool, and a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, you guys give this a go. It's not that hard. It can get a little finicky, but there's always a way to fix it. Okay? All right, you guys take care. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. TTFN.